guys, Sonny Dubs here and today I'm doing a video review on the BenQ PD2720U. Now this is a very expensive 4K HDR monitor that has been professionally calibrated um, from the factory. Now the monitor can be found for £880 in the UK, whilst in the US it can be found for $1,000. Now you might be wondering what on earth is the difference between the PD2700U and that simply is basically the, um, the cheaper, pretty much half the price variant doesn't have Thunderbolt 3 support nor the USB Type-C port and also has a cheaper stand. But other than that, the PD2720U seems to be pretty much bang on identical to its sibling. So let's say let's see if it's worth it. Now, first of all, let's talk about the specs. The monitor itself comes with a hot key puck G2, which is essentially a little control pod which allows you to quickly flick between anything you so wish, be it from inputs, your KVM switch, um, or um, in terms of color profiles, all of this can be customized uh, through the uh, monitor's OSD, which I'll show you in just a bit. Other than that, in terms of specs, is a 4K monitor, so a 3840 times 2160, runs uh, 60 hertz, it has got an IPS panel, has a quoted response time of five milliseconds, um, and in terms of um, its aspect ratio, it's 16 by nine. It's also got two two watt speakers built in. Now, the, uh, the speakers themselves haven't got the best um, audio fidelity. However, they do get pretty loud, so that's worth bearing in mind. It's also got a headphone jack if you so wish to plug in um, your uh, headphones via 3.5 mil jack. In terms of um, inputs, um, in terms of display inputs, that is, um, you've got HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.4, whereas the other sibling has basically three display ports at 1.4 inputs. However, in um, to counteract that, you've got USB Type-C, downstream and Thunderbolt 3, well, two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Um, one of them delivers 60 watt, um, 65 watts of power and the other one 15 watts of power, so you can charge your laptop at the same time. There's also a USB 3.1 hub as well, if you so wish, and it's also got a built-in power supply, so you don't need an extra brick. Um, you just plug in the kettle plug straight into the uh, monitor. Might seem trivial to some, but worth pointing out, specifically those who are interested in buying a monitor. Now, the monitor itself, in terms of the build quality, has got a three-sided borderless design which looks great from the front. It's also got a very thin bezel at the front and it's got a metal stand which provides fantastic adjustments from a tilt, a height, a pivot um, and all rotate essentially all the uh, all the functions that you want from a stand. However, at the back of the monitor, something you might not notice on video, is that the monitor itself is pretty thick, it's pretty chunky. It's like a chunky monkey, let's put it that way. Uh, that's not to be massively concerned about, but it's just worth bearing in mind that it doesn't look as stylish as some of the other monitors out there. That to me doesn't really concern me, but I just thought to point out just in case you are someone who wants a very elegantly designed monitor from the back. There's no RGB lights. Again, those are completely pointless, so I don't know why you'd ever want them, but I just thought to point out. Now, in order to access the OSD, the monitor can be accessed via the um, little puck there or via a little joystick control, which can be found at the back of the monitor. Now, I'm gonna quickly go through the uh, OSD um, OSC side of stuff because I feel that BenQ have done a fantastic job in integrating pretty much every feature that you'd ever want from a monitor um, through this OSD. Now, first of all, you've got inputs, you've got PIP, PBB mode, and PBP times four mode as well, and swap uh, down there, which I'm not really sure what swap is, but nevertheless, you've got all the settings over here. As you can see, I'm using it via DisplayPort only. Um, in terms of the picture mode, you've got brightness, which I've set very low for the camera to pick it up properly, um, sharpness and um, advanced mode, display mode full. And then in terms of the color, now here's where the things kind of shine. This monitor comes pre-calibrated with pretty much all the modes that you can see in front of you from uh, sRGB, Adobe RGB, and yes, the brightness will quickly change there as I'm flicking through them. But you can see all the different modes over here which are available. It's great to see a massive list of, um, of modes to choose from which come factory calibrated calibrated. There's also dual view, which is fantastic to see as well. Essentially what it does is splits the monitor uh, through the middle um, and you have one color space, say for example, in your, your primary mode, which in my case would be sRGB mode. And then on the second one, you would, for example, have DCI-P3. Now, I'm not sure my camera would pick it up, but um, ultimately you just have to take my word for it. It splits the, um, splits the uh, monitor in two and therefore you've got two different color modes that you can edit in. That's great if you're working on two separate projects, specifically given the monitor as a 4K monitor, you can pretty much multitask um, pretty well with uh, all that real estate that you've got on your um, on your monitor. 
Other than that, in advanced mode, you've got AMA. Now, I've got AMA as high because I was testing some gaming. However, um, I would suggest it as off or high. Um, premium does um, cause some inverse ghosting to, to come into play. I will mention that this monitor is not a gaming monitor, but I did testing its gaming performance and its response time and input lag isn't the best out there. But again, what would you expect from a monitor of its class? In terms of audio, as I mentioned, it's got a bit, uh, the built-in speakers, which aren't great, but they are there. Then you've got the KVM switch, which is useful if you've got multiple inputs and different sources, which I haven't got um, to show you right here, but you just have to take take my word for it, it does have KVM switch there and it does work. Then in terms of custom keys, you can assign the ones via the OST and you can adjust the ones via the controller key where you've got three different modes and you can even uh, choose them. So for example, in my color modes, I've got three as a display P3, sRGB2 and low blue light uh, mode as one, which is great to see that you can uh, customize these and choose whatever you'd want. Um, and the fact that, for example, the KVM switch allows you to quickly switch between two different inputs is uh, pretty neat. Now, other than that, in terms of system, you've got OSD settings and um, power settings. Nothing too uh, revolutionary over here, uh, but just worth bearing in mind. So I would say the OSD is com com completely comprehensive, and I must say I'm very impressed with what BenQ have done. It's no surprise given the monitor is a professional grade monitor. However, I just thought to point it out nevertheless. Now moving on from that, let's talk about the actual uh, monitor's um, panel quality. Then the monitor itself uh, uses an IPS panel. Now what that means is that you do get um, a bit of um, a bit of backlight bleed. A bit is a kind of an understatement. Here is a picture of the monitor in a completely black room. You can see there is a lot of backlight bleed in the corners. Now normally I would say this is completely acceptable for a gaming monitor. However, for a professional grade monitor, I wouldn't expect backlight bleed in the slightest. I know it's IPS technology, so you're gonna expect it to some degree. However, I wasn't expecting it in, in a, an 850 pound monitor. So as you can see over here, the backlight bleed isn't the best and I have seen better from other pro grade monitors, for example, from ISO uh, to say to say the least. Now in terms of the monitor's um, uh, panel performance, you can see in sRGB mode um, and using DisplayCal, uh, the monitor scores 96.2% in the gamut coverage and the gamut volume of 98.9% is pretty impressive but isn't the best given the fact that again this is a pro grade monitor. It does um, overshoot a little bit on the reds and under uh, perform a little bit in the purple and blue sections. Again, gamers would not care about this, but for those people who are buying this monitor, which would be pro-grade um, video editors and photo editors, you might find that to be a little bit um, concerning or disconcerting, should I say, given the fact that it's an 850 pound monitor. Now in terms of brightness, here is another sort of complaint that I had. This monitor runs in sRGB mode at 238 nits, whilst in user mode or any other mode it runs at around 333 nits. Now that is plenty bright for you to be using it on in a pretty bright room. I would expect it to go a little bit higher, but what this does impact, however, is HDR performance. Now I went into Destiny 2, a game that supports HDR, and I took two, two different pictures with my camera. Now I appreciate it's not the best way of looking at a picture or or looking at HDR image specifically because it's coming through the camera and then through the monitor. However, you will be able to hopefully see that the picture drastically changes. Now HDR does, which is this image, does give you deeper blacks over here by the dome, does kind of bring out some uh, better details between the horizon and the actual dam over here, which are kind of lost in this non-HDR image that you can see in front of you over here. However, what I will say is that that brightness, which is limited, does limit HDR performance. So HDR is included, and yes, it does have HDR support. However, I would have liked to see HDR 600 as a minimum included, and that would mean that the monitor would have had to hit over 600 nits or above in order to hit that perform uh, hit that mark. It's a shame that the 850 pound monitor can't hit over 400 nits, let alone um, have that HDR sort of certificate which goes with it. It just seems kind of silly to have HDR at such a low um, brightness. Now, on the plus side, however, I will say that the monitor does score excellently through my color calibrator. It had an average delta of 0.63 with a maximum of 1.6, which is fantastic. Contrast ratio is a little bit dull at 600, uh, 722 to one. Uh, for an IPS panel, you'd expect around 1000 to uh, 1500. Um, so again, it's decent, but not great. And then uniformity check was actually fantastic throughout the board. Brightness and uniformity was pretty much pinpoint across um, across the across the panel so overall what do I think of this monitor well truly I would say that if you're looking for a 4k monitor and you want a professionally grade monitor 
and you want Thunderbolt uh, 3 support, then yes, this monitor should pretty much tick most of the boxes. However, for £880, I would expect a lot better, a lot better performance. At which point I would say go for the PD2700U. Yes, it does away with a beautiful stand and Thunderbolt 3 support. However, it's £430 instead. And therefore, some of the points that I mentioned over here can be forgiven given the monitor's a lower price. So that's pretty much it. In all honesty, if this monitor was more similarly priced to its sibling, then I would very much recommend it. But given its very high price tag, I can't see myself recommending it, even if you are a pro-grade um, animator or someone who's going to be um, professionally grading. So there we go, guys. I've been totally dubbed. Hopefully you enjoyed this review.